Money Roots is made possible by the support of our sponsor, Rooted Planning Group. Are you ready to take control of your financial future? Look no further than Rooted Planning Group, your trusted partner in financial well-being. At www.rootedpg.com, you'll discover a wealth of resources and expertise to help you thrive financially. Rooted Planning Group specializes in personalized financial planning, investment management, and retirement strategies. They understand that every financial journey is unique, and they're here to guide you every step of the way. With a team of experienced advisors, Rooted Planning Group is committed to helping you cultivate a secure and prosperous future. Visit www.rootedpg.com today to learn more about how Rooted Planning Group can help you grow your money roots. Welcome to Money Roots, the podcast where personal finance gets personal. Each week, Amy and her guests dig deep into the world of finance, making it more approachable and understandable for everyone, no matter where you are on your financial journey. From savings and investments to budgeting and planning, we'll bring you practical advice, inspiring stories, and expert insights. We believe that everyone has the potential to grow a healthy financial future, and we're here to help you nurture it. So whether you're a financial guru or just starting to plant the seeds of your financial knowledge, this is the place for you. Get ready to uncover the tools and strategies that can help you thrive financially. So without further ado, let's dive into today's episode of Money Roots. Hello, listeners, and welcome back to the Money Roots podcast. We're excited to join you today. And as you've noticed, you're going to keep hearing a few different voices over the next couple months as more of the team is jumping on to talk about different topics that are important to people. And today you have me. This is Kate Welker. Um, I've been off and on the podcast the last few months, and I was on last time if you listened with Carrie. And today I'm joined by Becky Eason, who is another one of the financial planners at Rooted Planning Group alongside me. Hi, Becky. Hey, Kate. Glad to have you back on and me. And I'm actually excited because uh, you and I don't get to hop on and chat as often either. So it's been fun exploring different topics and getting, uh, we thought the listeners would enjoy different perspective. Number one, different voices. So it's not the same voice in your ear every single week and different perspectives throughout our team um, and things we're seeing with either clients or out on social media and kind of just in the world, things we're reading and then um, our own personal experiences. So Today, uh, we really want to talk about how busy women are spending their money. We work with a lot of busy professional women and we're managing money and also talking about spending money. And we really wanted to focus on bringing it back to using your money intentionally to either add some time to your life or enjoyment to your life, because that's really what it's all about. Uh, if you happen to listen um, last time, we had a podcast out recently on underconsumption. There's a trend going around right now. So we wanted to mention that. Um, but we think it's really important when you're spending to think about your values and your time associated with your spending. We hopefully um, never want to judge or shame anyone how they're, how they're spending their money, but just more focus on being intentional. Think about what your spending brings to you and it's okay to spend money. Like That's the part that I think today we want to get into. Um, first, setting goals, really making sure you're achieving those. You've got to be able to pay your bills. You want to be saving. You want to be set. But beyond that, what are some of the things you can spend your money on? Um, so with that, this would be fun. Some things are going to be a little more responsibility, maybe not so much fun, but also bring more um, fun and enjoyment to your life by by spending. So the first topic that we are going to dive into, I think is maybe, well, for me, the least fun. And this is something that both Becky and I are dealing with in our lives just on, I think, pretty opposite ends of the spectrum, and that's childcare. So this one um, is going to be more applicable to those of us with children. But childcare is a very large expense and also um, an area of concern. It can bring some pain and, and stress in your life. Uh, also, just handling when you have children, they are a responsibility and making sure that they're handled appropriately so you can focus on the things that are important to you. So um, I, Becky, since I've been chatting away, I let you jump in and talk a little bit about childcare, whether you know your experiences or what you're seeing with, with clients and, and how they're spending their money there. Yeah. So um, for myself, in my experience is that I tried getting my daughter into daycare and there just wasn't any availability in the area that I live. Mm -hmm. And so thankfully, I have family that, you know, we just divvy up and 
divide and conquer. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, fortunate in the aspect of families watching over my daughter, but also this cost of daycare. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a pretty astronomical cost, um, but having family um, be able to help out has brought that cost down dramatically. Yeah, that is, it is helpful when you have those resources, the old, uh, you know, it, building your tribe and, and your village to help support you. Uh, the expense of daycare is something talked about a lot and other people may not know also the demand. There is a high demand and not enough availability in many areas. So we are seeing that with uh, people that are struggling to find a solution. When you have family, again, I was very blessed to have family too to help me out so that I could find, even if it was a part-time solution so that I could um, make my work schedule kind of um, flexible. I am myself a little bit at the opposite stage. Actually, my children are now beyond the age of typical daycare, which is wonderful. Um, And when those cost savings come in, then it's time to have more fun planning about um, if you have been spending money on daycare, what can I do with that extra money? College planning, sometimes a seamless transition. Um, Put a little plug there, not to get too sidetracked, but um, also camps and activities. So I'm at the other end now where we are into like day camp, summer camps, activities, just partly for their enrichment, but also partly to give me a little brain space. So for me, it's a way to spend resources to keep them busy. Um, And also if I'm working and even though they're older, it's still nice to have quiet time occasionally. Um, I think my whole team knows that as we get closer to the end of the summer, my distraction level is uh, maybe a little bit more so. I am, I love having my kids home and summer is a very sweet time, but also sometimes just getting back into, um, fall in school for us on our side and uh, schedules are nice too. So childcare is one of those. It's just a big area. So we wanted to make sure we addressed it. And there's a lot of options out there. A lot of funds are going there. And it's more, I think, a necessity for many people. But also it's a way that it does to help you think about your values and what it brings to you. It brings you time. It brings you the ability to continue your career if you have your own career goals and to be able to uh, hopefully make more than you're spending on child care or at least maintain your benefits for a short period of time and and then to be able to have that extra income to do the other fun things that we're going to move in and talk about things that um, to me are more fun and less stressful than child care is. Uh, so moving on, the next area that we see people spending money on is outsourcing housework and services. Um, Becky, do you want to discuss anything that you see people spending money on that maybe brings them a little extra time in their lives? Yeah, this is a really great one that I think we're seeing more and more people actually utilize. And that's hiring a housekeeper, even if it's once a month, um, just to come in and, you know, allow you to shift your time to maybe spending it with family instead of cleaning Mm -hmm. or doing laundry or any of those household tasks that may not be fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I think so often it's like, what should I be doing when I get home? And when we are talking about kind of areas of satisfaction in life, and we're finding for a lot of women, leisure is a struggle um, because you're, we're pulled in so many extra directions if there's something we can take off the plate. And I also think a big part of this for certain people is letting go of the guilt. Like I should be able to do it all. But I will say that um, friends and clients who are doing this, they tell me it's like the best money they're spending. They come they come home that day and just to, it, it's almost like they walk in the door and a weight's been lifted off of them. It's like, okay, I have a nice clean space. I can now relax, and, um, really relax versus like sitting down and running all the things through your head. Like I should be doing this, 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 and this. Uh, you mentioned laundry. This is something that um, takes a lot of time. I've actually timed it myself because I don't know, I'm nerdy that way to see how much time I'll spend doing a load of laundry um, when I'm figuring out things. But I I did have one person once tell me they had um, decided to hire out laundry. And we were talking about work balances. Um, Their phrase was, I will continue to work as hard as I need to, to not have to do laundry. And I thought that was a really interesting perspective because it was just such a relief to know that that was done. Um, Everyone had clean clothes that were, you know, folded and ready to put away. And it was just one less thing they didn't have to worry about. And when they were not working, they could enjoy time, family time. And that was very important to them. It was a major value. So it was a big win and something that we keep high up on the list. Yeah, I think, you know, things like cleaning and laundry, it's so hard to justify being able to spend the money on it um, because it's something that you're capable of doing. Mm -hmm. But once you're able to flip that switch 
it's so worth it in so many aspects because you are essentially buying time. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a, f- a well-respected um, businessman that I know. And sometimes I think maybe as women, we're a little afraid to use some of these phrases or just talk about freeing up time to make the money. But to an extent, it does come down to that. And uh, this was, again, a very good friend of the family was talking to um, actually my my father, who struggles with trying to do all of his own things as well and run a business. And they were talking about, in their case, it was mowing the lawn. But the friend had said, you know, you seem stressed about it all the time and you're taking two hours to mow these lawns you have to mow. Why don't you just hire a teenager to do it? And he goes, in that time, you could be making four to five times likely in your service versus what you'd pay somebody to do it. And it was it was really... Um, and again, maybe a, a male female perspective of like thinking in numbers that way of like, hey, if I'm doing this, I can do this instead. Not so much that I tend to think for myself about what does it give me in time and leisure, but also that gives me extra resources to be able to, I can work, I can make the money, I can pay someone to do it, delegate, outsource, um, hard words for a lot of us, but definitely make an impact. Um, Becky, can you think of another area that we're seeing um, people spend extra money on to bring them extra like enjoyment or extra time? Yeah, um, meals and meal planning. Mm -hmm. That's a huge fun. Yeah, absolutely. Um, One thing that I this is again, we'll flip, flip it personally for me. As time's gone on and I've really thought about extra resources, I really like eating out. Like it's something that we just enjoy. So giving us the, um, you know, allowing myself not being like, oh, I should be eating at home. I still give myself some limitations and there's times it does get a little out of control, but we enjoy being able to, to eat out on special occasions. Uh, but we've also um, utilized, I've attempted to in the past at least, uh, meal delivery services. And I've tried a few different ones. We, we tend to sometimes get a little bored of the food, but having that box show up that has all of the ingredients perfectly portioned out with instructions and I don't have to think. Um, for me, that has been hugely helpful because I just say like, hey, tonight we're having like whatever it is. I pull out the card. Everything's right there. There's still a little prep involved. And I really enjoy cooking. Like I really do. For me, it's just the thinking about it. Um, that is something that, and again, at first I'm like, oh, it seems like a lot of money. But in reality, I'm like, it's still way cheaper than going out to eat somewhere and really not that much more than buying the ingredients separately. Have, have you experienced this yourself or, or had clients doing this? Yeah, I use meal delivery as well. Um, we'll go in spurts, you know, where <laughs> we sign up and then take a little break. But during the break, what I like to do is actually on the weekend, go through and pull some cards. Mm hmm. And then kind of make my own meal delivery service because then I can Mm -hmm. order the groceries, have them delivered without having to do this meal delivery. That's a great idea, Becky. I have had that intention and I very rarely do it Uh, just because I'm like, hey, we like this recipe. But there have been other recipes we've used because they're quick. And you just mentioned something else that I think is important. And I've been listening to you with that, which is grocery delivery because it's it's time, just time to go to the store. And and I used to have a very set time a week when we were in a different stage of life. And I would go and I'd get a coffee and I'd shop and get my groceries and I'd have a meal plan. I'd come home and I'd meal prep. Um, life has changed. That time block is now no longer available. So I am finding ways to, like you said, make it um, more con- more concise as well in that. And I was mentioning before, like my, the planning for me. So I did find a service that was just meal plans. You can log in and I I paid for a subscription. So you log in at the beginning of the week and you, there's maybe 15 meals available. So you pick the ones that you want and it generates a list for you. So it generates the shopping list and then the recipes. And for me, that was great because again, it took the thought out. I had to think for about 20 minutes to figure out what would my family enjoy? What do I want? And um, then just someone printing out the shopping list for me and then having all the the little instruction cards available was really helpful. So allowing, again, allowing yourself because, I mean, eating is something we have to do and you should enjoy it, especially if you're a little bit of a foodie, give yourself extra grace to spend money there. Um, And even door dashing nights that it's really busy and you just need to feed your family. I'm going to add a little like, it's okay. Or yourself, not even family, but just need to feed yourself. It's okay. It's, It's okay sometimes to do that. Um. Next area we want to chat a little bit. This is, um, I think I'm trying to move through things that are like um, more fun and more enjoyment. So getting down into personal care and this, I mean, we always talk about taking care of yourself is really important. You have to take care of yourself before others. 
on the necessity side, but also as you start meeting those basic needs and you have some extra income, allowing yourself or having fun spending money on some of those personal care um, areas. So um, I'll toss it back to you for a minute, Becky. Are there areas that you can think about that you're either for yourself or you're just seeing out there that women are spending money on just themselves? Yeah. One of the top ones that comes to mind is exercise. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, that's it has multiple benefits for, you know, it gives you time to yourself. um, And then the exercise in and of itself also creates endorphins that make you feel better and, um, you know, reduce stress. So it's, you know, great on two fronts, if not more. Mm -hmm. Any specific um, purchases or, or expenses you've seen that come to mind? Um, you know, gym memberships mm-hmm. and kind of circling back to childcare. A lot of gyms actually have childcare. So if you are able to find the time to go to the gym, you know, someone's there to watch your kids at a lot of spots. So mm-hmm. a win-win. That is a win-win. I'll, I'll go back to, to topic number one as a little tip. So I love this. When my children were young, I actually was very, at that point in life, very regular in going to the gym because there was a child watch that was included in our membership. And it was really great for us. We'd drop the kids off. We'd have like an hour. Um, But I also had friends who would drop their kids off and they would use it. um, We'll get back to exercise. But for, well, this is personal care. They would go just use the sauna. If there was a sauna at their space, they'd go sit in the lounge and have a cup of coffee. Um, They wouldn't take advantage of it, wouldn't be forever, but they'd also utilize it just for a few minutes of um, me time. So if you are a busy woman with small children and you need a few minutes Look into your gym and see if they have childcare option. Um, yeah, the other I've seen coming up a lot of um, training, like a personal trainer to if it helps you with accountability or exercise programs like uh, Peloton is the one coming to mind. Um, there's various other other ones and subscriptions. But I think, too, sometimes that accountability, like if you're paying for a service or a trainer, it gives, keeps you accountable and you're going to show up for that, too. Um, other areas are things like sports. We'll say spa or massage, um, taking a few minutes for yourself if it feels good to have that. Well, massages always feel good. Or take a few minutes to get a pedicure so you look down and you just always feel your best going, kind of going out into the world. Personal care into even if it's salon services. We were chatting the other day and I said one thing for me was um, kind of being like, hey, it's okay to actually spend money on my hair. That's one thing that for me, I like having my hair done. And as I'm aging and different colors pop up on my head um, that I don't always... I am not yet ready to accept. Um, for me, it's worth the money to make sure that I can go and it's it's just cleaned up and taken care of. And I enjoy it. It's, it's, a, it's a big enjoyment factor for me that I allow myself to spend money on. And then just kind of sometimes having fun money for, you know, shopping for yourself or buying the extra cosmetics or creams, um, not to be like, you have to always be chasing younger, just things that make you feel good, feel good about yourself that you like and um, say, hey, it's okay. I work really hard. I, I am busy. These things will either make my life easier or just bring me enjoyment. Um, it's okay to just spend a little money on yourself to enjoy enjoy life more. All right. And then I th- maybe saved the best for last, but an area that I think is important for a lot of people and we see for sure busy women spending a significant amount of money on, and I'd say significant, is travel and entertainment. Um, Becky, any thoughts around travel or entertainment or what you're seeing? Yeah, this one's my favorite. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, when we talk to clients about travel and entertainment, you can just see so many people light up when they're able to, you know, talk about what their goals are around this and then to see them go on the trip and come back. Um, You know, so, you know, it's nice to be able to set a dollar amount to kind of keep yourself in a range, Mm -hmm. but to allow yourself to go and actually fulfill those trips while you're able to. It's such a great reward. Mm -hmm. I I just had someone do a quote trip of a lifetime and they came back and it really was a trip of a lifetime. It was just so for me rewarding to hear about their experience. And I think getting away when you are, when you are busy, getting out of your environment is so important um, as well, just to help you kind of come down from all of it. I just came back from um, a week off. I, love my wonderful team that supported me. We did like a staycation. My my husband had to work. There's just the kids and I some time before the end of summer. And we had a wonderful week, but it was still a little bit different being home. Um, I found I had to leave. Like I had to get out and go do something. Cause when you're, you know, it was, it's just a little harder to, to, um, 
enjoy the time where if I'm sitting by the ocean, which when people ask favorite places, I used to try to think about like a physical location. I've changed it to just be like on water. For me, anywhere on or near the water is very relaxing. Um, I could sit there and read for three hours and not feel guilty the least bit about it because I'm just out of the environment. So I think those trips to get out out and um, and decompress. And I think for some people, it's really essential. If you are, many professional women are in high stress, high demand roles, and just for our overall health to be able to get away and decompress and bring all of those stress levels down is very important. So um, it's going to look different for everybody. For some people, it might just be a little cottage or, you know, it could be different things. For some people, it might be an international, you know, world-class spa to go to and, and encourage that. Um, and on the backside too, entertainment. Um, just thinking of ways that are, you know, fun to reward yourself. Entertainment is going to look so different by person, but is there a hobby? Is there an interest? Do you like um, Broadway shows? I'm, I'm the, or the host this week, so I'll bring it personal. I am a, a huge um, lover of shows and my kids are. And we have been looking at, it's been a while since we've been to one. And locally, there's a lot of really good shows coming up. Um If we have local listeners in our area, we can (laughs) share. There's just a lot of shows that we're torn about. You know, we do have a limited pool to that area. And, you know, what do we want to do? But also thinking about like, all right, we do have a lot of enjoyment. Is a a season ticket at some point something we want to consider as our family? And also like, is it bringing enrichment to our whole family? So um, those things to just, again, get, get out of your environment for a while, let you have fun, enjoy all the hard work that you do all the time. Um, And, Again, kind of bring it back to some of your your values, um, things that are important to you, and just be intentional with where those extra dollars are going. Well, thank you for joining us this week. Um, hopefully, you've in, enjoyed this and some of these have resonated with you. And that um, I think our takeaway, as I just said, is to sort of just think about your dollars and where they're going. And um, as we're being intentional about how we spend our money, think about ways that could bring you um, extra time to have a little more leisure time or enjoyment or fulfillment in your life. You've been listening to Money Roots, your go-to podcast for making personal finance accessible and approachable. Thanks for joining us today. Amy and her guests have enjoyed guiding you through the roots of your financial journey. Remember, whether you're planting new seeds of financial knowledge or nurturing the growth of your existing financial plans, Money Roots is here to support you every step of the way. Be sure to follow them on Facebook, X, LinkedIn, and Instagram for more resources. And of course, subscribe to Money Roots wherever you get your podcasts so you never miss an episode. A big thank you to the sponsor, Rooted Planning Group, for making this show possible. At Rooted Planning Group, they're committed to helping you cultivate a thriving financial future. Until next time, keep growing your money roots. 